Generic greetings and welcome to Science Insanity, a channel dedicated to bringing my love of sci-fi and all its glorious inconsistency to you, the viewer. Today we're going to be looking at the single biggest, single most powerful, single most fuck around and find out ship Battlestar Galactica has to offer. The Nova class Battlestar, a questionably canon, remarkably stupid ship that starts to ascend past the semi-hard sci-fi limits of Battlestar Galactica's universe and enters into the realms of a turbo nerd screaming more as he staples six digit numbers worth of guns onto a monster vaguely resembling death. Unfortunately, due to technical issues and my own remarkable incompetence, Steve will not, in fact, be joining us, and today's midweek lore video is going to be a little bit different, both due to my co-host being mysteriously missing, and because the Nova class was an adventure to dive into, unlike pretty much everything else I've done so far. Before we get into that, however, shameless self-shill. If you'd like to support Side directly, then consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below, and if space shekels are in short supply, then like, sub, ring the bell, and watch our other content, since every little bit helps and is appreciated. Plus, if you want to hang out, trade memes, and be a part of a small but growing community, check out Sai's community Discord server. We'd love to have you fellow Turbo Nerds. And with that, on to the Nova class, shall we? Now, most fans, even a lot more of the hardcore ones, probably won't know much about this other than it looks cool as hell and isn't real, or is real but from the original series and isn't technically canon, or not real, it just, it's, it's a mess, okay? So not only is this a lore episode, but it's a little journey through Battlestar Galactica's vibrant fan community and fan-made stories. So to start us out with, the name Nova. It never showed up on screen, but apparently it was written in as one of the battle stars of mankind. At least that was the earliest version of the name I could find. I don't think it ever really showed up on screen. I don't think it existed outside of there being a list of them and it being on there. So it is what it is. And from there, it's essentially entirely absent from Battlestar Galactica until 2003, where the name shows up again in the Battlestar Galactica video game for the PlayStation 2. Did anyone else not know this even existed? Because I sure as shit didn't know this existed before I started this project. Look, I even managed to find footage of it on YouTube, reasonable quality as well. It was made between the original and remastered series and draws from both. The designs for the big ships are the original visuals, but the Vipers are this weird in-between of the Mark I and the Mark II, with some big changes to Cylon ships, new enemies invented, stuff that never shows up again in the later series or in the original. It was absolutely wild to look through the little bit of footage I could find of it. It was fully decanonized and isn't part of either version, so it's just left floating there in the void, I guess, but still, holy shit, this was real. And now, granted, the topic of today's video, the Nova class, it really only shows up here as a call sign for a Viper pilot that you fight alongside during several missions, then she gets obliterated by the toasters or something, and then that's pretty much it. Now, normally, I would quickly move on from this, but I want to go back to that again. There's a Battlestar Galactica video game that's essentially just the X-Wing games from Star Wars, but in the BSG universe. Why am I just now learning of this? And for an entirely separate video topic that it has nothing to do with. It even lets you do the Viper RCS drift and maneuver in 3D if you want, not just like the fighter planes in space that Star Wars does. So it's not just a ripoff of a different game like you might think, it's actually got its own unique quirks based on the IP it's made around. What the fuck, humanity? How long were you gonna leave me in the dark about this? That's absolute bullshit. We need to actually get back onto things before I just dive down the rabbit hole that was this discovery and get back on the topic at hand. So, back on track. The Nova also doesn't show up until after the Reimagined series ends. I believe there was a ship in there somewhere that had a name, but it was, you know, like off-screen died, whatever, not canon, so we can ignore that. But it shows up as an idea. Essentially, there were a lot of unused and scrapped concepts for ships and stuff that never made it into the actual show, either because they couldn't figure out how to use them, couldn't figure out how they would work along with the setting, or they just didn't fit into the actual visual design and lore for the world that they were building. The Nova shows up as this strange in-between of the Artemis and Jupiter class we know and love, and it was basically trying to keep the more angular head and blocky shape of the original while working in some smoother curves and a little bit of a different design that made it feel more armored. 
And for the most part, unfortunately, that's where all of the canon pretty much ends. The name of the character in Battlestar Galactica video game, what the actual fuck, people, how did I not know, some odd art here and there, concepts that were never used in the name of a Battlestar in the original series that was sort of canon but never actually showed up, so it's questionable, and that's pretty much everything. There is nothing else for the Nova class that exists in the canon of Battlestar Galactica. Overall, pretty boring and really insignificant. But here's the thing. As I dived into the fandom, the community created assets and such that are ostensibly not canon, I found the shit people seem to be really interested in. You see, the most powerful question that Battlestar Galactica inspires in its fans is, what if? What if the nuke didn't go off around New Caprica? Would the Colonials have stayed and made a new society there? What if the Cylon attack worked like they suspected, and only around a third to 40% of Colonial fleet was actually affected? Would we have gotten a second Cylon war rather than the Colonial genocide? What if there were other surviving battle stars and fleets? What if some of the Cylons during the first war decided to take mankind's side? What if the Cylon Civil War started before the second Cylon Human War? What if the Stealth Star had worked? What if Adama learned about the hybrids? What if Lee Adama wasn't a useless piece of shit that ruined everything he ever touched? There are so many what ifs that this show inspires. And this is where the fandom community creations come in. Battlestar Galactica has one of the most unique art styles in sci-fi, at least in my opinion, and people love to run with it and make all sorts of crazy shit. This is where the Nova class really comes into existence, and this topic was suggested by one of my Patreons, and I'm like 90% sure this is what they wanted me to talk about, so I'm just gonna swing for the nines and keep going. Because I mean, sweet Jesus, look at this thing. And the bullshittery that it gets up to according to the author is just absolutely ridiculous. Basically, we are entering into the fanfiction part of sci-fi, where it's just a bunch of kids slamming toys together and saying, nah uh I have an everything-proof shield. So, without further ado, allow me to introduce you to the alternate fan universe of Battlestar Prometheus. This is essentially a fanfiction rewrite of the entire setting, the timeline, events, even the characters and faction details. I should also say, this was a bloody adventure to try and find. Despite my best efforts, I cannot provide you with the story itself as it has apparently been lost to the internet. Google can't find it no matter how hard I try, and the only links to it no longer function on websites that look like this, so uh, yeah, it's, it's gone. Sunk in the sands of time. The 28 chapters that made it up were stolen by an angry toaster or something, so we're just gonna have to deal with all of the art, wiki articles, and websites still discussing it that are actually left around and allow us to piece together some of its lost grandeur. And I'm not gonna lie, felt a little bit like what the Mechanicus deals with in 40k, trying to figure out how the ancient washing machine works, like piecing together ancient esoteric bits from a bunch of different sources, so it was pretty entertaining to do. But regardless, on to the Nova class Battlestar. The Colonials answer to the Cylons once and for all, a war-winning battleship of incomparable power, remarkable capability, and frankly utter bullshit technomagic MacGuffins. The Nova class, god, look at this thing's girth, was meant to be the next generation of colonial warships. Not simply an evolution of firepower and armament like the Mercury was to the Jupiter, oh no. It was also intended to finally put into practice a number of new technologies and tactics that had remained impossible or theoretical up until that point. But since I know what my audience are here for, let's talk about the guns first, or the weapons and bulk of the ship, starting with its dimensions. The Nova class is fucking monstrous, okay? This Battlestar utterly, yes, Battlestar utterly dwarfs all other colonial ships and overshadows even the largest of Cylon base stars. Those two terms are way too close and constantly get mixed up in my head, but I'm gonna leave that in rather than doing a second take because I'm lazy like that and I'm rushing to get through this. So coming in at a truly, genuinely stupid 2.3 kilometers long, 350 meters tall, and just under a kilometer wide, for perspective, it's about 40% larger than the Mercury is. And if I stack it up against the Burj Khalifa, a nearly one kilometer tall, largest building on Earth example from real life, this is what it comes out to. That's a big boy. That is a very, very big ship. And propelled by four massive next-generation sublight engines, the Nova class can match smaller vessels like the Mercury or Valkyrie Battlestars while dramatically outperforming older vessels like the now decommissioned Jupiters. 
and oh god, the guns. Oh my god. Okay, so for anyone who's seen the Battlestar Mercury video, shameless self-promotion, uh, probably going to be pinned up in the corner if you want to click on it, they'll know that this thing has like 70 main guns compared to the 40 of the old Jupiter. I don't think that number's accurate, but it's close enough. So the Mercury has just a huge loadout of firepower, and it also has two types of guns. The standard colonial double-barrel cannons on the dorsal and ventral hull and along the gunnery trench, and it has much, much larger ones in the head that only fire forwards and are like 10 times more powerful. They pretty much one-tapped a Cylon base star in the show, so you know that these things are incredibly powerful. The Nova class has... Jesus Christ, the numbers, man. The Nova class has 10 of those massive gun batteries in twin tube setups. So it has 20 barrels of Cylon Baystar one-shotting potential buried in its head. These siege guns are designed to immediately destroy Cylon Baystars, both the old massive chunky ones and the new spindly ones, in a single volley. Or, failing that, leave them so crippled that they may as well have been destroyed. These siege guns are also meant to bombard planets from orbit, intended by colonial designers to obliterate Cylon space stations, shipyards, and planetary facilities from a safe distance. Supporting these guns, and when I say support, imagine them in extremely heavy quotation marks, was 84 dual-mount colonial cannon batteries spread across the ship. Almost triple the amount that you would find on the Mercury. And even against the incredibly upgunned Block 2 versions of the Mercury class, this thing still had like double the guns. It was quite literally an entire fleet's worth of firepower compared to smaller or older battle stars. It is beyond stupid. And I won't even attempt to guesstimate how many point defense weapons and smaller caliber guns it's got on board. The answer is all of them. How many guns? Yes. And that's pretty much it. However, it doesn't it doesn't stop there, because it can't stop there. This is Battlestar Galactica, and this is the successor to the Mercury class. There is only one direction that we may move, and that is more. I don't care if it doesn't make sense, it's the truth. Firstly, it's FTL Drive, okay? The Olympus class FTL Drive of the Nova was more than three times as advanced as the ones mounted to the Mercury, allowing the Nova to compete with and in some cases outperform even Cylon jump drives in short bursts. It also had a fast charge and calculation system due to its onboard virtual intelligence. The easiest way to think about what a VI is in the extended lore of Battlestar Galactica, and these are canon by the way, the, the Mercury class carries these, at least the more advanced ones do, but the Pegasus I think took it offline along with the command navigation protocol in the actual show. Anyways, while an AI is a general intelligence and can adapt and learn and improve in all areas but may struggle in certain areas that it's not super familiar with, it is massively intelligent and remarkably good at learning. A VI is essentially a dumb or a limited AI. It's just as smart, just as capable of learning, just as capable of adapting, and just as powerful, but its limitations are literally everything except for its very narrow purpose. So while the Block 2 Mercuries had some VIs on board for gunnery and point defense systems, which is primarily what allowed it to operate with pretty much just Lee and a few bridge officers on board when he ruined everything in the show, the Nova, meanwhile, had them for everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything that mattered for a battleship. Calculating jump coordinates, managing electrical systems and output, predicting target movement and creating flak patterns, even bolstering the firewalls and preventing hacking attempts. And while they were extremely powerful, in some cases even being shown to overpower Cylon hacking attempts and reverse their own haha got your missile strategy back against them, they were utterly incapable of doing anything outside of their given role. And with the use of this incredible computer system and the VI, the Nova class is capable of detecting the energy signature of a ship about to jump. The Nova detects this, lines itself up with the incoming signature, and if it's specting hostiles, <laughs> well, remember those siege guns from earlier? Be a real shame if a Cylon ship materialized directly into a volley of fuck you of epic proportions. To put that in more simple terms, yes, the Nova class can spawn camp. I'm gonna let you ruminate on that for a little bit while I move on. 
It also has several dozen VLS missile silos, just like all the other battle stars, which means that a full battery of standard and nuclear missiles are at its disposal. And while we don't have exact numbers, I would imagine it follows the philosophy of colonial warships where the missiles are a secondary weapon to the guns, meaning it probably has a few dozen that fire the giga big cruise missiles with several dozen smaller launchers used for point defense or anti-fighter duty or anything else really scattered about the ship alongside its point defense grid. When it comes to its fighter complement, however, we move back to the most ludicrously impressive stuff. Just the ha, I'm better than you mentality that the Nova has compared to every other colonial ship. The Nova class comes with extremely advanced command and control systems for its fighter groups alongside its own weapons, meaning the Nova can launch and maintain a fighter screen, proportionally at least, multiple times bigger than any other Battlestar, with a total of 500 to 540 craft capable of being brought along during wartime operations, the Nova maintains 16 to 17 squadrons of 30 Vipers. In order to carry all of these craft, the Nova has an evolution of the Mercury's flight pods. While they are wider and much longer, which accounts for their larger capacity, they mirror the Mercury in the way that each flight pod is made up of two separate hangars the two on the top and the two inverted flight decks below that have inverted gravity. Each flight deck, four of them, have 50 Viper launch tubes and 10 launch elevators for heavier craft like Raptors. Altogether, the Nova's four flight decks can launch 200 Vipers and 40 Raptors at a moment's notice, cycling around half of its active squadrons into a fight the moment the word is given, with the other half deploying as they're readied. Around three to four squadrons worth of small craft, so maybe like a hundred give or take, are generally held back as reserve and not crewed in case losses are suffered or they just need an emergency oh shit group of fighters. Similar to the Mercury as well, the Nova has an internal fabrication array. However, <laughs> say it with me now, as is on theme, it is far larger and far more impressive. It's essentially a short factory, allowing the Nova to quickly make replacement parts, ammunition, and electronics to replace or repair damage done to its fighter complement at a new from the factory level of quality. If needed, the fabrication array can dedicate itself entirely to fabricating brand new Vipers or Raptors from raw materials and turning them out relatively quickly. If things are especially dire, the fabrication array can also be used to make custom components and parts to repair itself or other onboard systems, meaning if you give the Nova enough time, it could, theoretically, fabricate a new capital ship where the Mercury was limited to small craft and components only like the Vipers. Like, imagine you leave this thing alone long enough in some mineral-rich asteroid field and come back 20 years later only to find an entire battle fleet just hanging out doing its thing. It could also do this theoretically forever since it doesn't need resupply. As long as it can find tilium fuel for the ship and water for the people, it also has an inboard hydroponics facility capable of feeding its own crew in full with a notable surplus if they push it, and if shit breaks they have the fabrication system so who cares. And you may be wondering, damn, this ship is massive, so surely it has a massive crew to go along with all of these insane systems and all of this stuff that basically turns it into a flying city, right? The Nova has 2,300 crew at maximum, and several hundred of those are marines and pilots for fighting. That is a few hundred less than the Mercury, even though it is 40% bigger, and that's because it is so heavily automated it is technically possible for as little as a single person to jump into the captain's chair and fly it with relative effectiveness. Remember lads, we're in fanfiction territory, so the Nova class is remarkably overpowered, the vanguard of a monstrous new story. What, you may ask, was the Nova actually meant to do? What role did it fill? Well, quite simply, it was supposed to be a little of everything, like all Battlestars by design are, but in a fleet, the Nova was meant to be THE command and control vessel and flagship of entire theaters of colonial combat. Each Nova, using its computer systems and highly advanced VI, was meant to coordinate and control entire fleets. Plural, not a fleet, multiple. Coordinating firing solutions, giving movement orders, and orchestrating combat patrols from vast distances. 
It was supposed to be the beating heart of an entire battle group, and with its ability to detect FTL jumps before they happened, and its ability to rapidly plot jumps beyond regular range for itself and accompanying vessels, it was meant to give colonial fleets decisive first strike capabilities. If it ever went to war, it's likely the Nova class would be the leading vanguard of colonial offensives into Cylon space. Of course, this is all non-canon, but it is simply a beautiful ship and a fun ride of discovery. Once again, Battlestar Galactica video game. That alone should be enough to make this worth it for people who are watching the video. And there is more about the Nova that you can read into, but it more gets down to tidbits from the actual story that was written, the alternate universe, and unfortunately it's missing, so there's not much I can really do. There are a few neat tidbits here, like the uh, Nova also carries the Scimitar, which is an alternate version of the Raptor. Basically, they have in the actual canon Raptors regular with all their sensors and stuff, and then they have the Assault Raptor, which has a bajillion and one missiles and guns strapped to it. The Scimitar is basically an Assault Raptor, but all of that stuff is integrated in intentionally, so it's like a super heavy bomber and combat support platform in an actual fight. And with that, we're done. A little journey through the Battlestar Galactic community's history and obscure titles and stuff, and holy shit, there are so many alternate what-if universes people have created for this IP. It is, it is frankly ridiculous. But that's pretty much where we're going to end off. So, a huge thanks to everyone that watched to the end, and a huge thanks to all of the channel's patrons. Your guys' support is greatly appreciated, with a special thanks to all of the people at the $5 tier. Thank you very much to David G, the original Augie, Eleven Bravo Crunchy, Terry Higgins, Pedro Munoz, David G, the other ones, Silencer, Vox Apollyon, Phoenix, BT Legend, Electro Boy Eleven, Logan Maynord, Mickey, David Armand, Cree Dome, Robin Stapp, It Fenrir Striker, Tachi Tukane, He's Deb, Bixie, Virtus, Fabric Four Four Five, Anchovy Bob, Mini Crustacean, Charles the Snap, Polly, Eric Jones, Joseph Holiday, Zombie the Zerker, David B, and Sweet B. Thank you very much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. I hope. Hope it'll continue in the future. Have a wonderful day. Outros are hard. Goodbye.